Are you ready for an open discussion with the best of the best and the best of what's next? Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. Join in on a great conversation today with some of the world's great influencers as they showcase great advice and techniques that made them the game changers they are today. Now, here's Tony D'Urso. Welcome. I'm your host, Tony D'Urso. I interview some of the most successful people in the world, and I thank you for joining us. This show is dedicated to helping you turn your vision into reality. And we are the number one show on the Voice America Network. Today, we're going to talk with Alexandra Watkins, the buzz on brand names. As you know, my interviews with the world's elite entrepreneurs are all about helping you launch your new business or take your business to the next level. Sometimes the penny drops with the right information for you to start something profitable yourself or help you do your job a whole lot better. I love to help you, and I love to hear how these world-class interviews are helping you. If you want to help me help more people and help get my show to those that need to hear this in the world, please consider giving me a review. The easy way is to go to Apple Podcasts or go to ratethispodcast.com slash Tony. A kind five-star review helps grow and support this show. Today's show is about the buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins. Let's see what we can learn today. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary recap of what we went over, so stay tuned for that. Alexandra Watkins is a leading and outspoken authority on brand names with Buzz. Her breakthrough book, Hello, My Name is Awesome, How to Create Brand Names That Stick, was named a Top 10 Marketing Book by Inc. Magazine and a Top 10 Branding Book by Branding Journal. Here we go. Hi, Alexandra. Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. So great to have you on. I can't wait to go over some of these topics. Awesome, Tony. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you. You know, we're going to talk about brand names. We're going to talk about what are they, why are they important or not, what the buzz is all about them. And what I'd like to do is follow your journey to success, Alexandra. So let's take it from the top. How did it all start from you? What's your backstory? Well, I have a really interesting backstory, unlike anyone's you've ever heard. When I was in eighth grade, I realized that I wanted to be in advertising. And I think some of it had to do with watching Bewitched all the time. Remember Darren Stevens worked for McMahon and Tate? So because I figured that out at a really young age, I didn't want to go to college. And because like, why did I need to call it? go to college when I already knew what I wanted to do. So I was able to, and of course my parents were not cool with that at all, but I was able to convince them that it was a good idea to just let me do what I really wanted to do. So I was able to talk my way into working in an ad agency and eventually work my way up to get a job as a copywriter at Ogilvy and Mather. And you may know, I know, I'm looking. <laughs> That's a very big brand name. Kudos it is to Ogilvy, right? And they're now just Ogilvy, they shorten their name. But yeah, Ogilvy and Mather, huge deal, right? David Ogilvy wrote Ogilvy on advertising. So I got into Ogilvy. I became a copywriter. I loved copywriting. But every once in a while, I would get thrown a bone and get to name something. And I loved naming and I was really good at naming, but I didn't know that naming wasn't a profession. How would I know it was a profession? Who had ever heard of naming, right? Who, like, who, who would think? <laughs> who would think? And naming wasn't part of advertising because naming falls under branding and the world of advertising and branding rarely intersects because clients have all kinds of agencies. They have their PR firm and their ad agency and, you know, the branding firm. Well, they're all fighting over budget. So the branding and ad agencies, they never even knew the. they kind of were aware of each other, but I didn't know anything about branding. I worked on the ad, the ad side. Branding is in the beginning, advertising is at the end. So when I discovered naming was a thing, like a profession and people got paid for it, I switched gears and said, that's what I'm going to do. So I discovered that the branding firm where I needed to go to, pardon the pun, make a name for myself was Landor and Associates. And it just happened to be right in my own backyard, which at the time was San Francisco. So I tried 
everything I could to get a job at Landor. Now, this is so long ago, Tony. Now, I know you can go in the Wayback Machine and remember this time when the internet was in its nascency and we didn't have LinkedIn. So it was back in the day of don't call us, we'll call you, right? You didn't know the name of anyone. I mean, I was lucky to get the name of one person at Landor and I would send this guy, his name was Alton Wright, and I would send him photos of my dog and all the names I came up with for my dog. I tried everything I could to get into Landor and I couldn't catch a break. Why? Because everyone that gets a job at Landor as a namer has a degree in linguistics, right? Now, you know me, I skipped college, so I didn't have a degree in anything. My background was advertising, not academia. So nothing worked. I couldn't get into Landor. And I never gave up, but I just kind of had to set it aside a little bit. And in the meantime, I was still doing advertising. I was doing freelance copywriting. And I think at that point, I'd left Ogilvy. And I finally got my big break. And you'll never guess how. Okay, do you want to get I'll give I you a guess? Oh, oh, I get a guess? All right. Yeah. Let me think. Okay, well, since they were in your backyard and you didn't have to travel and take a flight and get a hotel, I would have probably gone there at lunchtime with some donuts and coffee. I'm Italian, so that's, that's what came to my mind. I'm sure that that's not what it is. No, but, but that's a good guess. That is a good guess. And um, back in the day, we used to, on Valentine's Day, we would hand deliver Krispy Kreme donuts to our clients in San Francisco and with notes that said, we love working with you. So I'm all about donuts, but that's not how I got my big break. Um, and it was pretty sweet. So it was Saturday night. And it was my third date with Samir. And we were going to a cocktail party where I was going to be meeting his friend. Now, you would never know this Tony talking to me right now, but I'm actually pretty shy if I don't know people. And I get really shy at parties when I, I just clam up, right? I, it's hard for me to break into a conversation. So I asked Samir, who's going to be there? Just wanting to get some intel before we went, you know, trying to find something in common with these complete strangers. So he told me, oh, there's friends that were going to be there, Susan from his office and Jim from his bike team and his friend Anthony from Landor. And I was like, what? You know oh someone my. who works at Landor? What do they do? And he's like, very nonchalantly. He's like, I don't know, head of naming or something. And I was like, what? Wait, what? What? Anthony, like, because of course I'd never heard of this person because I only have the name of one guy, Alton Wright. So I'm like completely beside myself with excitement. So I go to grab my business cards, which I always kept by the door. And Samir looked at me and kind of half joking and half not joking and said, um, what, you know, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm getting my, I'm getting my cards. I want to meet your friend, Anthony. And he said, no, you're not. And about getting my cards, right? And I'm like, Samir, wait, what do you mean? He's like, Alexandra, this is Saturday night. It's a cocktail party, not a networking party. Leave your cards at home. I'm like, Samir, what is your deal? He's like, look, every time my friends meet my friend Anthony and they find out that he's a namer, they say that they're really good at naming things. And I'm like, but I am really good at naming things. And I get it now, right? Because this is what I do. And everyone says, oh, I'm really good at that. So I understand. But I said, look, I am good at naming things. I had named some things, you know, in advertising and doing some freelance stuff. So I grabbed my cards and I shoved them in my little purse. And Samir kind of rolled his eyes at me. And off we went to the party. Now, the whole time we're driving over there, he's not really talking to me like it's a sore subject. And look, I knew Samir wasn't going to be my future husband. So I didn't really care, right? All I cared about that time was developing a love relationship with Anthony. So we get to the party and it's a really crowded bar. Samir will not tell me who Anthony is. Now, I am shy, right? So I can't just go up and ask people who's Anthony. So I spend the first hour of the party eavesdropping on every conversation, you know, kind of like leaning back, like folding my arm, my arms folded, like kind of leaning back in to see what I could hear with my bionic hearing. And I finally hear this guy who's wearing a top hat say his name is Anthony. So 
I'm mosey in, and remember, I'm petrified, right? I'm not good at like breaking in, making small talk. So somehow I mosey in and I introduce myself, and Anthony looks at me and says, Alexandra, what do you do? I totally lied. I said, I'm a product namer. And he said, No, I'm a product namer. And I acted so dumb. And it was like, You are? He's like, Yeah. And I'm like, Where do you work? He's like, I work at Landor. I'm like, Oh. He's like, Well, you know, why haven't I ever heard of you? Because it's a very small world, us namer people. So I said, You know, I don't know. I'm from advertising. And he said, Well, what have you named? Now, Thank goodness, the entire way over in the car, I was like, you know, what have I named? What have I named? Because, you know, we never want to be put on the spot. And I was prepared. So when he asked me what I had named, I reeled them all off. And then Anthony looked at me and he said, do you have a card on you? Now, of course, I had a little tiny purse full of cards. But I played dumb again and I pretended that I didn't know if I had a card. I said, I don't know. Let me look. So I... I kind of bend down to look at my tiny little purse, pretend I'm like fishing around in there. And then I kind of look back and this entire time Samir had been watching me on the, from the bar, right? So I look back, look over my shoulder at Samir with the biggest F you on my face, right? And so in Samir, of course, I'm sure he's completely horrified, right? Watching me and then I like pull out my car. I'm like, oh, here, it's my last one. And I give Anthony my card, and a couple weeks later, I get a call from his assistant, and they put me on a project naming uh, chips for Frito-Lay. So that's how I got started. I became a freelancer for Landor. Anthony started giving me a lot of work, and I started working for the New York office and Frankfurt and all these branding firms, naming firms. So that's how I got started. And my names were so refreshing because... I was not from academia. My whole background was in advertising, creating concepts and headlines that made emotional connections. So um, just fast forward to to kind of finish this big circle. All these years later, um, Anthony and I are good friends. Uh, We're we're professional colleagues. He's been a good mentor to me. When he went out on his own, I I had lots of experience at that point doing that. So we help each other out. Samir, who I'm no longer in a relationship (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he takes full credit for launching my naming career. Alexandra, I cannot stop laughing. I am just holding back. This is a riot. I think every single person in my audience has one question and only one question. Okay. What is the and question? I've been laughing so much. <laughs> I don't remember. You forgot the question? <laughs> Okay, pause for a second, because I'm not joking. I am laughing so much, I can't get the question out. This is the Tony D'Urso Show, where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Just ahead, the chat continues about the buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins. But first, it's time for us to take a short break. See you back here in just a moment. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's that the old ways of doing things aren't working. Believe in People by Charles Koch is a surprising take on how you can tackle America's biggest problems, independent of partisanship and division. It's not just the life lessons from one of America's greatest entrepreneurs. It's the story of a former gang leader turned peace broker in his community. The story of an amateur athlete who created one of the most innovative recovery programs in the country. The story of anyone willing to unite to do right and move society forward. In short, it's for anyone looking around the country right now and thinking, there has to be a better way. Believe in People is out now. Order the book today at believeinpeoplebook.com slash Tony. That's believeinpeoplebook.com slash Tony. Tony, would you do that now? Help yourself and your loved ones? And please tell me how you like it. Believe in people, book.com slash Tony. What if I told you that you can have an extra 15 hours every week 
I'm serious. Does bookkeeping excite you? Probably not. Keeping up with financials isn't fun for everyone, but some people like numbers and accounting and charts of accounts. They live on this stuff, but for the rest of us, the thought of handling bookkeeping for our organizations isn't inspiring. Do you want to take the pressure off you so that you can handle the routine daily tasks that are essential to your organization? I mean, are you working in your business instead of on your business? You get the difference, right? Belay is the incredible organization revolutionizing productivity with their virtual assistant, bookkeeping, and social media strategist services for churches, nonprofits, and businesses alike. Belay has people that love bookkeeping and can make you the hero. Stop trying to do it all and reclaim countless hours of bookkeeping every week. Believe me, been there, done that. Stop trying to do it. Let Belay help you. A new year is the perfect time to set yourself up for success with the help of a world-class virtual bookkeeper from Belay. Let Belay connect you with an experienced virtual bookkeeper to help take things off your plate so that you can get back the most valuable asset in business, your time. Get a free download of the ultimate guide to virtual bookkeeping. Go to belaysolutions.com slash Tony to get it. And I'll spell that for you. Belay is B-E-L-A-Y solutions, S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S dot com slash T-O-N-Y. Belay solutions dot com slash Tony. I got my copy and I found the information quite interesting and easy read and most of all, helpful. Check it out, download it, and tell me how you like it. BelaySolutions.com slash Tony. You're listening to the Tony D'Erso Show with special VIP guests. We'd love to hear from you via email. Be sure to send questions and comments to Tony at TonyD'Erso.com. Now, back to Tony and his guest. All right, we're back on the Tony D'Erso Show, where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Today's show is The Buzz on Brand Names with Alexandra Watkins. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary of what I got out of this and share some pointers with you. Stay tuned for that. For more than 15 years, Alexandra and her naming firm, Eat My Words, have created Love at First Sight brand names for clients, including Amazon, Coca-Cola, Disney, Google, Twitter, and countless startups. All right, and now back to the chat with Alexandra. Okay, here's the question. We all literally, I mean, the, the switchboard is flooding here. People are saying, the question is, Alexandra, does Anthony know this backstory? Yes, yes, yes. I finally had to confess to him years later. And it's actually been, it was written up in a, in a, in a newspaper. And uh, yeah, I, I had to kind of fess up to Anthony. And of course, he really admired my, my uh, kind of hot spot doing that, right? It would, hey, I'm not used to doing things like that. But I knew that if I didn't do it, then I might never have that chance again. I am so impressed. I have one last question about that. And I want to go into more on branding and naming. Why do you like naming? What is it about naming? What's your purpose? What, what's it all about for you? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I love it. You know, like we named a, a GPS for dogs, Retriever. I named a frozen yogurt franchise, Spoon Me, the Church of Cupcakes. It's just fun, right? It's like these mini, like I loved advertising and creating headlines, but names are like little mini headlines. And they can be clever and fun and make people smile. So that's what I love about names. Plus, you know, if you're a namer, you're like in the major leagues of like, think of, of writing, right? Like people write newspaper writers, right? They're like, they very talented, but they don't make any money, right? But naming, like you make more money per word, right? Because it's just one, one or two words, maybe three if your company name is Eat My Words, like mine. But yeah, you get paid a lot of money for very few words. So that's, you know, I'm in the big leagues of writing. <laughs> We're talking about the buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins, and you can find her at eatmywords.com. I love that website URL. Alexandra, let's get into your vision path here. Now, I understand how it all came about. 
This is not just naming. This is brand names. This is names of things, of, of foods, of businesses, of perhaps even people. Are they really that important? Because we have bazillions of businesses out here. I'd love to know, what's your philosophy? Does every single business ever need a brand, every food item? Give us your thoughts. Yes. Think about this, Tony. How many times in your lifetime, we're just going to think about your name. How many times in your lifetime, and you can whip out a calculator if you need one like I would, how many times in your lifetime has somebody said your name, read your name, or heard your name? Well, you know, I have this uncanny ESP photographic memory, and I can come up with numbers automatically. It's 4,367,482, times. There you go. It's so, a very common word. You think Italian, you think Tony, it's like, I'm already branded. <laughs> yeah, so think about that. Think about your brand like that. So your name... First of all, your name, your brand name is the first thing people come in contact with, right? Whether they see it on a store shelf, they see it in social media, they see it on your name badge at an event. Your name is the first point of contact, right? It makes a valuable first impression, even more than your shoes. So that's why your name is so important. And no other investment you make in your business will last longer than your name. Think of Morton Salt. That company has been in business well over 100 years. Think of every piece of office equipment they've gone through in that time. Think of all of the offices, all of the employees, all of the paper, all of the stuff they've had that's been disposable. What's the one thing they still have? Their name. That's why your name is so important. I'm going to ponder that here for a second. Now I have a name, but... In this society, because there's so many Tonys, I have a last name. I have a surname. And actually, what I try to do is because it's, it's a unique spelling. There's an apostrophe there. But the search engines get all confused with that apostrophe. So I took it out. So I like it because if people say, hey, there's a typo in your name. But no, it's not really. I just took the apostrophe out. And I try to brand that. So instead of saying my name, you'll hear it on my shows. Instead of saying TonyDurso.com, for example, I'll say Tony, D-U-R-S-O.com. And I'm trying to get that in people's minds so that they kind of remember my name a little bit. Yeah, anything you can do to help people remember your name is good. Any type of mnemonic you can do, if people can, if you can do that and it helps sink in, especially if it's not familiar, right? Like your name to people in the United States, it's not a familiar last name. So anything you can do to, to help them with that is good. You know, I learned that as a kid watching TV because there's two things I remember from way back then that I will probably never forget. And one is LSMFT. And people go, what's LSMFT? Well, I remember as a kid that was lucky strikes means fine tobacco. And it struck in my head so much because it was spelled out just like how do you spell relief? R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Yeah. And so, and I thought when you spell something out, it really sticks. So I always say, Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com. Just hopefully it'll stick somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, like Tony with your name, I don't know how you feel about Tony the Tiger, but if you say, when you introduce yourself, Tony, like Tony the Tiger, people, people have a much stronger chance of remembering it because they can picture something in their head. I will remember that. What are the qualities of a winning brand name? Why do some stick with us and some don't? Well, that's a great question. So my philosophy, by the way, is a name should make you smile instead of scratch your head. So think about that. A name should make you smile instead of scratch your head. It doesn't mean it needs to make you laugh, but it just needs to make you smile like you get it. Like, oh, a GPS for dogs name retriever. I get it. So... I have developed this 12-point acronym, a name evaluation test called the Smile and Scratch Test. And SMILE is what you just asked about, the five qualities that make a winning name. And the S stands for suggestive. And I don't mean suggestive in a sexually suggestive way. I simply mean that your name needs to, to suggest something about what your brand is or does. So, for instance, Amazon suggests large to me. So that's suggestive. Now, 
the M in SMILE stands for memorable. What makes something memorable? It's really hard for people to articulate that, but I have a really easy way to articulate it. It's based in the familiar. So, for instance, the bike lock, kryptonite. We all know kryptonite from the Superman comics. We know kryptonite, so we have a familiarity with it. So when we hear kryptonite, bike lock, we get it, oh, like kryptonite repels Superman, kryptonite lock will repel bike thieves. So that's based in the familiar versus if it's just some random name that you make up and people don't have anything to grasp onto because it's not anything in their existing knowledge base, it's much harder to remember. Make sense? I'm thinking with it and I have questions, but I want I, right now I want to be the sponge and learn okay, more. Okay, but think about Tony the Tiger, right? With based in the familiar, we know Tony the Tiger. So that's what I mean by based in the familiar. This is the Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Just ahead, the chat continues about the buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins. But first, it's time for us to take a short break. See you back here in just a moment. Hey guys, running your business is hard work, especially when it's time to grow, which is all the time. We all know that. That's a no-brainer, nothing new there. And you know, finding talent, managing projects, processing payments, it all adds up fast. Fiverr Business makes it easy to hire top freelancers, collaborate on projects, and grow your brand, all from a single dashboard. For us busy entrepreneurs and businesses on the go, there are often times we need something made and it has to be done fast and of good quality. Do you need some quick banners made up? How about something transcribed? Perhaps a superior cover for your book or white paper? Looking for talent? Need a project managed? The list is endless for us sometimes, right? And it's so important for us because we want to work on our business instead of in it, right? I mean, we can all search and take free classes to learn things, and that takes time. And there's a lot of trial and error, as we all know. Let me tell you about Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. It takes time to hire freelancers for a job using other services. And you may have trial and error with your work not being done the way you want, yet you have to pay for it. Hey, I'm speaking from experience here. Well, that's a thing of the past when you use Fiverr. I use Fiverr exclusively of any other type of similar service. My banners, my transcripts, my book covers, and so much more are all done efficiently and effectively using Fiverr. As you pay attention to my interviews, I usually ask our elite entrepreneurs for any reference they highly recommend to the audience. Pay attention and you will hear that Fiverr comes up a lot. And for good reason. I sincerely love their services. Hey, authors, I found one of the best publishers ever. Right there on Fiverr. I found an amazingly creative book cover designer. Right there on Fiverr. My show transcripts are made flawlessly and quickly from Fiverr. And the list goes on and on and on. Fiverr Business is a modern workplace for the digital world. No more scattered feedback. Collaborate with your team, manage projects, and share freelancers. All in one workspace. Fiverr Business's team matches you with the best talent for every project. Now your team really can do it all. Fiverr Business simplifies working with multiple freelancers. Set budgets and manage projects with ease. Stop wasting time searching for talent. Just leave it to Fiverr Business. Their team of dedicated business success managers help match you with the best talent for your team. Hey guys, I really know this stuff so well. I'm really serious here. No more endless guessing in interviews. Plus, save and share your favorite freelancers for future projects. Very important. It's a simple way to set your business up for success and a big win for productivity and collaboration. I'm serious about this. I know I just said that. I think it's the biggest secret weapon for every entrepreneur and small business out there. Collaborating online hasn't been this easy since ever. And right now you can sign up for Fiverr Business absolutely free for the first year. Get one free year and save 10% on your purchase on Fiverr Business with promo code D-U-R-S-O. Just go to fiverr.com business and don't forget promo code D-U-R-S-O. 
Let's spell that. Fiverr is F-I-V-E-R-R. There's two R's there. That's F-I-V-E-R-R dot com slash business. Promo code D-U-R-S-O. Okay, guys, check it out. Sign up and tell me how much you love Fiverr. Again, that's Fiverr.com slash business. Promo code D-U-R-S-O. Last year alone, false declines cost the UK, US, French, and German markets $20.3 billion. False declines are what happens when an online purchase is declined when it should have been accepted, often the result of technical, financial, or fraud scoring reasons. That's why if your business takes payments online, you need a modular payment solution that flexes to your needs and provides you with granular data To better optimize your payments, you need Checkout. I like that they help you unlock more revenue with their connected payment services. There's connected and then there's super connected technology. And that's what Checkout uses. They have world-class fraud filters. They make payments seamless. And that's a great thing. Did you know that merchants lose over $20 billion due to false declines? Wouldn't you love to capture more of that? And before I go on, Did you know that 65% of merchants surveyed do not receive detailed raw response codes on failed payments? That's a huge percentage. I've been reading their free report, which I'll tell you in a moment, and I'm astounded at the money lost. In a survey of 5,071 consumers across four countries, 52.1% were put off permanently from shopping on a site because of the complexity of the payment process. Can you believe that? Ouch. Could this be why you're not getting as many sales as you think you should? Are you leaving money on the table? Just having an online checkout and taking credit card payments is actually the beginning of the story. Clearly, if you want your business to grow, you need better authorization rates, right? Checkout's unified purpose-built payments platform gives you the insights you need so you can optimize your customer experience, get more out of every transaction, and gain a granular understanding of how cash flows in and out of your business so you can innovate, adapt to your markets, create outstanding customer experiences, and make smarter decisions faster. It's why brands across the globe like TransferWise, Klarna, Revolt, Farfetch, and Grab trust Checkout. Learn more at checkout.com slash D-U-R-S-O where you can download their free white paper report Black Boxes and Paradoxes, The Cost of Discontinued Payments to get forward-thinking advice around how to build a strong payments mandate across your business, innovate, and keep pace within a fast-moving digital and consumer context. That's checkout.com slash D-U-R-S-O. Checkout.com slash D-U-R-S-O. I'll spell that. Checkout is C-H-E-C-K-O-U-T. Checkout.com slash D-U-R-S-O. All right, everyone, please download that report. Check it out and tell me what you think of it. Checkout.com slash D-U-R-S-O. You're listening to the Tony D'Urso Show with special VIP guests. We'd love to hear from you via email. Be sure to send questions and comments to Tony at TonyD'Urso.com. Now, back to Tony and his guest. All right, we're back on the Tony D'Urso Show, where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Today's show is The Buzz on Brand Names with Alexandra Watkins. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary of what I got out of this and share some pointers with you. Stay tuned for that. Her product name Hall of Fame includes the Wendy's Baconator, the Needle Robotic Vacuum, and a GPS for dogs named Retriever. And I'll tell you more later on. And now, back to the chat with Alexandra. Okay, then the I in smile stands for imagery. Same with back to Tony the Tiger. If we can picture something in our head, like I said, it's easier for people to remember. Because people remember images much more easily than they remember words or letters. Because, again, it gives your brain, like if you can close your eyes and conjure something up in your head, it's easier. You can just visualize it. So that's why imagery is so important in a name. The L in smile stands for legs, and that means that your name 
lends itself to wordplay. We worked with naming this woman who was a PR professional, and her name is Lynette Hoy. Lynette Hoy says nothing about being in PR. So uh, I named her company Fire Talker PR. Her tagline is hot on the press. So you see how the legs of that. She calls herself the fire chief. She works in the firehouse. Uh, she has a theme song, Fire, by the Ohio Players. So you can see how that's legs, right? It lends itself to a theme for extended mileage. So that's the great thing about having a name with legs. You can really extend your brand for years and years. And finally, the E in smile stands for emotional. You want your name to make an emotional connection. Otherwise, it's going to go over people's heads. And it needs to resonate with people. You know, we're bombarded with so many images and words and everything's coming at us, all the, you know, TV, social media. We need things that stick. And if you can make an emotional connection, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, there was a, I was being attacked by a mosquito at 2 a.m. And I, it was relentless, right? I couldn't get any sleep. So I went on Amazon and I looked up electric bug zappers, right? They look like squash rackets, which I think is funny because you squash a bug. So I saw four. They, had, they all looked exactly the same. There was like Electo, um, Bug Quick Zap, some other one, and the Executioner. Now, which one of those, the Executioner, right? It makes a strong emotional connection, right? Like, I want to, I want to like obliterate this little bug. And, and the Executioner, it, it, it feels like a badass, right? Now, the Executioner actually costs more than those other parody products. But I like the name so much that I was willing to pay more for the product because it made such a strong connection with me. And that's what can happen if you have a name that makes a strong emotional connection. You know, how many times has, you know, someone in your audience bought a bottle of wine because they like the name? They've never tried the wine, but the name resonates with them. So that's why making an emotional connection is so important. So that is smile. So now I'll let you, sorry. <laughs> I get a little um, excited uh, about these things. Well, that's totally okay. I'm thinking I've had my, my show for five years now. Should I change it? Is it, am I, you know, you're saying all these points. Does it have the S, the M, does it lend? Does it have the emotional appeal? I don't know. I don't think I have any of those. Maybe I do. I don't know. It's hard for people that use their own names because it's like Lynette Hoy. You wouldn't know that she was a PR professional but Fire Talker PR says a lot, right? So, yeah, it, 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 it's tricky because if you have a known show and you do, that's often, you often have so much equity in it already that that's going to be enough for you. It could be. I was actually on your site, eatmywords.com. There is this free name evaluation test, and you can go in with your brand name and test it. and you know, not trying to be embarrassing or anything, but I couldn't get past the second question because I didn't know if my name is memorable or not. The Tony D'Urso show, I'm like, I don't know that it's memorable. I've got a lot of people, but is it something that sticks? It, it should be Tony the podcaster, you know, you know, the Italian podcaster or something. Maybe that would be more of a flair. I don't know. You might need a tagline that could help you or just a positioning line. That, like, I call myself the brand name badass. That's nothing official or that I've trademarked, but it's just like a little thing that I call myself on LinkedIn. So, yeah, there could be a way to position yourself there. The way I like to tell people to think about name changes is think about how long you're going to be in business in the future. And that's a good way to kind of determine it. We just renamed a bank that's more than 100 years old. Does they plan on being in business? more than 100 more years. So if you have a lot of equity in your name, but you know you're going to be in business much longer, then you might want to consider changing your name. But I also know with someone like you, because you have so many great reviews on these podcast apps, that you know that's something you need to consider too. Like if you change the name of your podcast, is that are your ratings, your great ratings going to carry over with you. You know, you made me remember something. I have a tagline. You talked about it. 
I even had to think about it for a second. Do I have a tagline? It's right there on, on one of my show images. It's journey to success. But I never really say the tagline. I talk about it as if people know. And it was like, I do have a tagline. <laughs> and I want to bring up something to the audience here on your website. One of the things that caught my attention, one of the headlines says, your brand name shouldn't look like someone got drunk and played Scrabble. And I was so, I'm floored at the before and after and some of the things that you've put together and how you've changed. It's the same product. We don't even know the product just by the words and the association, the logo with it. You've, it's night and day. And on that note, which, there's a couple of things to talk about, but one of is common mistakes. We're kind of talking about that a little bit, but common mistakes in naming the brand. Maybe you can give us some, you know, we don't think you should do this. We don't think you should do that. You know, if you can give us a couple. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, scratch the flip side of smile is seven things not to do. I'll give you some of them. Some of, they're all important, but some of the really common mistakes people make is that your name shouldn't look like a typo. The S in Scratch stands for spelling challenge. And if your name looks like a typo, scratch it off the list. You don't want people to get frustrated with your name. And that's what it all comes down to. You want your name to be a welcome mat, not a do not enter sign. So think about it. You want your name to be friendly and approachable. And if I were... I have this new online course and I give the spelling test in the course where I'll read a name and then people have to spell the, try to spell the name. So I'll say like the name, um, you know, ship, like uh, ship a package. And, you know, you would think it was S-H-I-P, but it's S-H-Y-P. So like, why would you want to frustrate people and have them spell something wrong? We, we look, may, I think I developed all of this too because I don't like to spell things wrong. I don't like to embarrass myself. Nobody wants to spell anything wrong or pronounce anything wrong. And those are two common things. It doesn't matter if you know how to pronounce your name. Other people need to know how to pronounce it. And one of my favorites here is there's this company, a tech company, and their name is spelled N-E-K-T-A-R. And they want to be called Nectar. But everybody pronounces it nectar. They thought they were being clever by spelling nectar in that way, obviously to get an available domain name, which is the reason why most people do spell their name incorrectly. But they thought everybody else would would know it was pronounced nectar, but nobody will pronounce it that way. So it doesn't matter how you want it to be pronounced. And you only want your name to be pronounced one way or you're going to dilute your brand and confuse people. Because I could be telling you about a company called Nectar. Somebody else could be telling you about a company called Nectar. You would have no idea they were the same company. This is the Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Just ahead, the chat continues about the buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins. But first, it's time for us to take a short break. See you back here in just a moment. Earlier this year, more than 100 Twitter users got their accounts hacked into. Passwords, email addresses, phone numbers, and more. All taken from high-profile people like Joe Biden, Elon Musk, and even Kane West. These kinds of attacks are getting more frequent and more severe. And it's not just Twitter. Facebook, eBay, Uber, Adobe, and Yahoo have leaked data such as passwords, credit card info, and driver's licenses belonging to billions of users. Look, if someone can hack Joe Biden, just imagine how easy it would be for them to hack you. That's why I use ExpressVPN to safeguard my personal data online. According to recent reports, hackers can make up to $1,000 from selling someone's personal information on the dark web, making people like me and you easy, lucrative targets. ExpressVPN is an app that funnels your data through a secure, encrypted tunnel so that no matter what device you use, you can have peace of mind every time you use the internet. The app connects with just one click, is lightning fast, and the best part is ExpressVPN works on up to five devices 
simultaneously so you and your whole family can stay protected. If a breach can happen to powerful individuals, it can easily happen to you. Protect yourself with ExpressVPN, the VPN rated number one by CNET, Wired, and countless others. And if you visit expressvpn.com slash D-U-R-S-O right now, you can arm yourself with an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash D-U-R-S-O. Visit expressvpn.com slash D-U-R-S-O to learn more. All right, guys, check it out, sign up, and tell me how much you love it. ExpressVPN.com slash D-U-R-S-O. You're listening to the Tony D'Urso Show with special VIP guests. We'd love to hear from you via email. Be sure to send questions and comments to Tony at TonyD'Urso.com. Now, back to Tony and his guest. All right, we're back on the Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Today's show is The Buzz on Brand Names with Alexandra Watkins. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary of what I got out of this and share some pointers with you. Stay tuned for that. Since 2005, Alexandra and her firm have created Love at First Sight brand names for clients from Amazon to Xerox. Her personal name Hall of Fame also includes Smitten Ice Cream, Spanish Language School Gringo Lingo, Frozen Yogurt Franchise Spoon Me, and The Church of Cupcakes. And now back to the chat with Alexandra. My favorite ever, very timely, depending on when the show comes out, probably sometime close to Thanksgiving, there is a smoked turkey company called Greenberg Smoked Turkeys. Not a great name, but their domain name is infectious. It's gobblegobble.com. Another favorite of mine, I love peanut butter. I'm crazy for peanut butter. And there's a company called Peanut Butter & Co. And they have peanutbutterandco.com. But if you go there, it redirects. To their main domain, which is I love peanut butter.com. You know why? Because it's fun, it's easy to remember. And if you're crazy for peanut butter, you're gonna love that domain name. It's a more fun email address, it's a conversation starter. And it's better than just a regular domain name because it helps brand your company and it shows your personality. I love peanut butter, that's fun. One time we named a, a popcorn, gourmet popcorn store, Pop Psychology. And I know psychology is hard for people to spell. So the domain name was Crazy for Popcorn, which is this whole, you know, playing into like the, the theme of psychology. And it's fun. And that was the tagline. So you can have a lot of fun with your domain name and do clever workarounds. And back to making an emotional connection, uh, there's a luxury condo building in San Francisco called Lumina. And they couldn't get Lumina.com. And I was walking by one day and I saw this billboard with their domain name and it made such a strong connection. It said life at Lumina.com. And it's like, wow, life at Lumina. Like I want to live there. It just, it just was so evocative of an experience of living in these luxury condos. So that's what you can do with a domain name. We've talked about so many domains that you love. What's your most favorite brand name and why? Oh, my favorite brand name is a bike pump for, you know, a tire pump. And it's Joe Blow. I mean, what's not to love, right? Like how unexpected is that? I just saw it. I was on a date and the guy, there was something rattling around in his trunk. And I'm like, what's that sound in your trunk? It's not a dead body, is it? (laughs) <laughs> and he opened his trunk and there it was, Joe Blow. I'm like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> it's just like, so good. Yeah, Joe Blow, by far. Such a good name. That's so funny. What are some of the coolest things you've gotten to name? You've mentioned so many. Did we, did we hit the coolest ones? No. Oh my gosh. Okay. The coolest, well, I would say the kind of the coolest experience I had and I think this is when cannabis was already legal legal in the U.S. I can't remember. I mean, in, in California, I had a client that was, it, they made the first breathalyzer for uh, cannabis, uh, for law enforcement. And I was in their office and I saw this big poster and it said, smoke weed for science. 
I'm like, what's that? What's that? And they're like, oh, we're doing the study at San Francisco General where we're paying people to get stoned and, you know, try our products so they can measure the efficacy of it. And I said, and you got paid 250 bucks and you got like a $50 gift card for Uber for Uber, so you didn't have to drive. I'm like, I want to do that. And they're like, but you can just try it in our office. I'm like, I'm not going to get stoned in front of you. So I signed up for the study and they accepted me. So that was hilarious. And I like did the whole thing on like, I was like writing my experience on Facebook. And of course, my mother was horrified. And so I did the study. I tried the breathalyzer and they like really want you to get super stoned because they want to really test it out. And so it was crazy. But um, at the end, they gave me the the gift card and I, I don't like Uber personally. I'm not a big fan of, of the company. So I took a lift home and then I used the, I had the munchies. So I used the gift card for Uber Eats. If you can have an imagination and activate your imagination on a daily basis. And that's something I do. And that can be like have a slinky on your desk. You know, we talk about having a childlike imagination. Having toys around is really fun. Have a magic eight ball, a slinky a kaleidoscope, right? Like think of the wonder that you had as a child. If you can bring that back into your life, do it because that, that will, you know, cause we get so, you know, people, especially now just staring at a computer all day, we forget that there's a whole world out there. But for me, I could always visualize and here you can't see what I'm looking at, but I'm looking out at my Barbie dream house. And I can always picture having a swimming pool and I have one and there's a giant pink flamingo in it. And we painted the back of the house pink, not the front of the house, because I don't want people to be like, oh, you live in the pink house. I didn't want that. So only the back of the house is pink. But, you know, we have a, we put in a Brady Bunch slide, you know, super retro slide and like a ping pong table and a trampoline and people come over. They're like, how many kids do you have? I'm like, I don't have any kids. Like, we're the kids, you know? We have fun. So um, we built a surfboard fence and put in a tiki bar. Like, I have lots of color. In my The carpet in my office is it's maroon and, and orange squares. Like, I have a sofa made out of stuffed animals. I have a skateboard. I have surfboard in here. My bookshelf is a pink retro refrigerator where I keep my books. So be playful and imaginative every day. It helps keep your mind young and fresh. And just like, who would have thought to put books in a refrigerator? But so if you can just try to do some, just do things that are a little different. And it's kind of cool to see people with their Zoom backgrounds. Like even if every day to put a different Zoom background on or try, go on stock photo sites and look at pictures and find some that you can download. Just have fun. We don't have to be so serious all the time. It reminds me for, for so long, I used to have a bunch of little cars on my desk, just a, a whole bunch. And then one day they went away. I'm not even sure why anymore. I, <laughs> that's a different story, but I want to bring my cars back. Bring your cars back. Having little collections and playing with them. We love that, right? Just even take five minutes a day just to like play with your toys. One last one here, Alexandra. We have a hungry audience of entrepreneurs, small business owners. We always want to learn. We, we're absorbing. You know, I hope everybody goes through this again and again a couple of times. There's so much information that we've provided to our audience. But I always like to know if there's any great resources, you've mentioned a few, but any other great resources that you'd love to recommend to our audience? Yeah, one that I discovered recently that is great for so many reasons, and you have to really think of how you can use this, but I guarantee you'll find a way. It's called Rev, R-E-V dot com. I don't know what it stands for, but it's a way that you can take an audio of re recording of yourself and have it. Trans transcribed and it's so cheap so for instance when i did my online course i had all the audio recordings and i had the entire thing transcribed so now if i ever want to write a blog post i have all of that written up already when i was writing my book and a lot of people ask me how did they get started writing a book record yourself go to rev upload it have it all transcribed and they're amazingly accurate 
have it transcribed, and then boom, there's your book, or at least a good start of it. If you have stories to tell and you don't want to type them all up, go to Rev. It's such a good deal, and it's better. It's a better deal than Fiverr, and it's really fast. And Fiverr is my other resource, and I know some people have probably heard of it, maybe use it. I use it for everything. It's great. My email signature I've done on Fiverr, which I get compliments on all the time. I have any little photo retouching I need done, everything. I, oh, if you need a fun gift for someone for five bucks, you can have crazy videos made. Look at like their unusual gift section um, for holiday gifts, especially now we're all trying to watch our money. Um, Fiverr has crazy fun stuff on it. And it is, it's a deal. And people, people will do anything for $5. It's really amazing. Thank you on Rev. And yes, on Fiverr, it's my back office. I use it for literally everything imaginable. It's, it's, I know it's very popular. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest out there. And it's just so great. And we, we help bring work to people all over the world. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a great thing. Great resource. Once again, we talked about the buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins, and you can find her at eatmywords.com. Check it out. There's a lot of good stuff on that website. I've mentioned a few of them. Thank you so much, Alexandra. I had a blast. Hey, fellow entrepreneurs. Thanks for hanging out with me while I featured an elite entrepreneur who took her vision to reality. I'm sure this was as inspiring for you as it was for me to do this interview. We learned some great buzz on brand names with Alexandra Watkins. I think this is the first time I've met someone whose future was decided by a TV show. Do you remember Bewitched? If so, do you remember all the antics with Darren's advertising agency? Lots of laughs on that. And that brings up a great question. If you know what you want to do in your life for a career, should you go to school or just apprentice in the industry you're interested in? It sure sounds like it would speed things up to me. And it sure did in Alexandra's case, who began working for a massive advertising agency. Not that I'm not advocating going to school or to university. I did. I put in my time and I'm glad I did it. But that was what was right for me. So I'm just opening you up. Maybe this gives you some ideas. Now, the way she landed her big job in the company of her choice, while completely by chance and serendipity, you may say, I say that's because how bad she wanted it. And she had that vision she clung on to, and the opportunity materialized for her, as it often does, when we hang voraciously onto our vision. She didn't get the hundreds or thousands of no's that so many of us seem to get at times. She did have some of them from her boyfriend at the time, but this goes to show you that her vision was greater and that any amount of no's would not have deterred her. What gumption. I hope you learned from this. Tenacity rules the day in the realm of success. Did you know that about your own name? That it makes the biggest impression on people? Alexandra says it's more important than your shoes. And I wish I would have thought at the time of asking her what she meant by that. Are our shoes really that important? Okay, kidding a little, I think. Well, are they? Anyway, our names are our best investment. Nothing in our business lasts longer per Alexandra. Now, that is something to think over carefully when it comes to our business name. This interview is worth listening to again as there's so much more here. There's a great takeaway here. A name should make you smile instead of scratch your head. I'll let you listen again and write down what S-M-I-L-E stands for. Those are great points. Make sure you go to her site at eatmywords.com and get that free name evaluation test. There's so much more I got out of this interview. What did you get? I would love to know how you use this information to help you in your business or career. Did this interview give you any ideas for your business? Did it stimulate you to take some action? Please share and grab hold of your vision. Decide you're either going to start something great or take it to the next level. You have to decide first. It always starts with a decision. And you can get my vision map to help you along the process. The free ebook is at Tony, D-U-R-S-O, dot com slash books. I created my empire in just a few years. That's all it took. I had the vision map as my guide. I wrote it up so that you can do it too. Let's help you move on your journey to success. Once again, please consider supporting this show with a nice review. Will you just go to ratethispodcast.com slash 
Tony, thanks. And remember, just take action. Success awaits those who persevere and remain steadfast despite the odds. Sow good seeds, do good deeds, and join me on the next episode of The Tony D'Urso Show. We hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the Tony D'Urso Show with his key influencers. Be sure to tune in again next Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Influencers Channel. 